Marina Myron is a researcher at the War Studies Department at King's College London. She's in Berlin. Marina, thank you so much for your time. Will this actually Absolutely. make any difference to the course of the war? Apparently, the Russians have already been moving their troops and equipment further away from the Ukrainian border. Good evening. Well, th that is precisely the point that this gesture is more of a political nature than of military nature, because on the one hand, the Russians have been expecting this decision at least since uh, April 24. So they have been preparing for a potential um, deep strike capabilities of the Ukrainian armed forces, even with um, the likes of Taurus missiles, which have a much greater range than the at attackums. And uh, of course, we also have to understand that the Russians have already been able, they claim to shoot down attack them, so their air defense systems are prepared and Ukraine has a limited number of them. So how many can it use? And the use will be restricted again to the Kursk region. So this is more of a political move on the one hand to give Ukraine as much as the United States can or as many concessions as they can before Donald Trump enters the White House. And of course, um, this is considered to be a quid pro quo for deploying North Korean soldiers to the Kursk region and deploying North Korean long range artillery. And of course, this move creates pressure on Germany to send Taurus missiles to Ukraine. Yes, and Germany has said it still would not like to send longer range missiles uh, to Ukraine. And you mentioned North Korean troops there, Marina. Uh, so equally, the question becomes for the Russian side, uh, what kind of difference might the North Korean troops in Kursk make uh, to specifically what's happening in that uh, Russian region there along the Ukrainian border? Well, for the Russians, we have seen that the priority has been in the Donbass and the Kursk region. Um, the fact that Ukrainian troops are there are, is actually benefiting the Russians militarily because it's prolonging the line of contact as long as they stay out, uh, where they are and cannot advance any further. However, it all has a political cost and people in Russia will be asking, so uh, why are they still on Russian territory? So what the the North Korean troops could bring to the table is take up rare positions, so do logistics, for instance, and, and support to, to the military operations, freeing up Russian troops who then could be deployed to the Donbass. So they could free up troops from the rear to be sent elsewhere. But other than that, there are also um, some speculation that they might be operating the long-range artillery, which has been sighted in Russia two days ago, the uh, North Korean long-range artillery. So it's essentially, it is about moving Russian troops who are combat ready from the Kursk region back to the Donbass. There have, of course, been the usual threats of some kind of appropriate retaliatory uh, moves by the Russians to counter this decision that's come from the White House. But red lines that Moscow has laid down before have already been crossed. Fighter jets uh, from Western nations, uh, big uh, Western-made tanks on Ukrainian territory. So what do you think the realistic reaction may be here from the Kremlin? It is very difficult to say, and if we recall um, the fact that uh, Putin has decided to change the Russian so-called nu nuclear doctrine, it's not a doctrine per se, but the conditions um, under which nuclear weapons might be used. So that was a first nudge. And I think the Russians didn't want to escalate. They didn't want um, a, a, a nuclear escalation. And so they were waiting to see what is what will happen on the battlefield how far will nato get involved and i think we we crossed this uh, important threshold when the russians said okay now it is time to actually do something to show that our nuclear trade still has a deterrent power and that changed the nuclear doctrine and when Putin was asked several weeks ago what he would do if the United States allows Ukraine to use long range weapons, he clearly said that it will be, depend on the scenario. And I think it, it is uh, by design that the Ukrainian troops will be able to use only Atakams missiles and only in Kursk. They're not getting any other deep strike systems from the United States. And also um, in terms of Russia's response, perhaps more strikes 
um, I, I'm not sure what the response would be, but I don't think that at this stage they will resort to the use of nuclear weapons. Also, we shouldn't completely discount it. Thank you so much for sharing that analysis with us, Marina. Really appreciate it.